Good evening. Well, after having been nagged for years by correspondents writing to Backchat asking when we were going to rebroadcast Pennies from Heaven and The Singing Detective, we have. And Black Eyes thrown in for good measure. This has not pleased Ms Sue Carver of Edwardstown, South Australia. Why are we being subjected to this continuous barrage of Dennis Potter on Sunday nights? I hate Dennis Potter. He's so full of crap and pathetic fantasies and bad music. Why does he have a fetish for murder and drowning women? Why can't ABC find something watchable to screen on Sunday nights? Even a John Hine movie would be better than this. Well, that should be good for letter or three. I haven't had much reaction yet to Black Eyes, the only one of the three series actually directed by Dennis Potter himself. Reaction to the latest run of the big gig though, I have a plenty. Donna Robb of Wheelers Hill, Victoria is upbeat about it all. Just a line to say, the big gig is back on. Life is worth living again. Thanks, ABC. And in the great weft and warp of public opinion, that is balanced by Diana Killen of Atherton, Queensland. Is this crude and disgusting show put on to demoralise and corrupt young Aussies? Christine Murphy of Balaclava, Melbourne, is also unimpressed. Indeed, she is repulsed by one particular sketch. Whoever it was used dead chickens as their props. They pulled them around, shook them and turfed them away. Four chickens had sacrificed their lives involuntarily just to be on a poor quality comedy sketch. You can't tell me someone was going to eat them after all that. The two women looked as though they enjoyed playing with the dead animals. <coughs> oh, sorry, Scott, check it. We were hired as professional bridesmaids for a wedding. Well, it wouldn't be for a funeral, Harvey. Oh, right, Scott. <laughs> the bride couldn't ask her best friend mm -hmm. to be bridesmaid mm -hmm. because she was marrying her best friend's husband. Yes. Anyway, I'm the return of Wendy Harmer as compere has been noted by Paul Gilmore of Tregeagle, New South Wales, and a house vote was taken. Get rid of Wendy Harmer. We feel that Ms Harmer is rude to her audience, offensive, definitely not funny, a poor host and performs in an amateurish manner. We believe in the ABC's policy of pioneering new concepts and people and we wish you would pioneer someone new to host the big gig. ...as a pig. He is such a filthy pig that his sock drawer once asked me to contact Amnesty International. <laughs> I once found an old girlfriend of his walking around his bedroom six months later. She'd been there living off flat beer and old bits of souvlaki. Anne and David McKinley, though, wrote to support shows like Live and Sweaty and The Big Gig, saying that the more conservative viewers should realise that. Auntie is not in existence simply for their gratification. The ABC surely must cater for different tastes and age groups, as do the commercial stations. We, in the 20 to 40 age group, are as entitled to reap the benefits of our tax dollars which keep Auntie going, as the more mature viewer whose sense of humour does not always match our own. Equality of viewing for all, and keep the laughs coming. However, the alleged poor taste of several big gig segments have kept our correspondents busy. Dave Valentin of Margate, Tasmania, was unamused about Wendy Harmer's jokes about the island state. Any woman in this country will tell you what this country needs is a great a, a spot of creative shopping, right, girls? Yes. <laughs> We've got idiots like who can't, don't even know how to shop. People like Robin Gray down in Tasmania. He's kept $10,000 in his drawer for a year. <laughs> There's probably not that much to spend it on down in Tassie. I mean, what are you going to spend it on? Like loose women? <laughs> he could probably cruise a bar for a year and not find anyone who isn't related to his wife's mother. Why jokes about our ex-premier Robin Gray? Why not attack Brian Burke? Or does that go against her political beliefs? Why inbreeding in Tasmania? I have lived in most states in Australia and found it more prevalent in larger states on the mainland. Hobart to Launceston in 30 minutes in an old ute? Come on. The best it can be done in is two hours and 50 minutes, and that is near flying. I, for one, am sick of being insulted because I choose to live in Tasmania. Jerry Smith of Woodlands, Western Australia, was definitely underwhelmed by another sketch. It was called Lady Die Funerals. I found it to be in very poor taste and very offensive, and most of all, not even funny. 
I'm not sure as to whether it was a deliberate attempt to downgrade funeral directors or simply to just make fun of deceased people and their bereaved relatives. Something. But you don't have to be a second-class corpse. Here at Lady Died, we feel that death is a very special time. This segment was nearly as good as the one the Doug Anthony All-Stars performed last year when they were encouraging our youth to, when all else fails, go and suicide. Well, as far as I'm concerned, after watching the excellent programmes GP and Backchat, I will now be either switching the TV off or tune into an alternative station. And that moment of decision approaches, but before you reach for the channel changer, Mr Smith, a bit more back chat from Ms M Norman of Edge Hill, Queensland, who says that she was watching Australian Wilderness at 2pm recently. When I was deeply disturbed to see the woman featured on this program to be poaching, presumably, native Australian plants. The woman in question was seen to be boarding an aluminium boat with two Kakadu National Park rangers with a carry bag with a plant sticking out of it. The bag and its questionable contents were quickly stowed away out of camera view. I feel I've come to terms enough with what happened to me, to face going out on the water again. A strange feeling. I'm not sure whether I want to see a crocodile or not. One wonders if this plant cutting, as it may seem, will one day make an appearance in this woman's back garden at a costly ecological expense to the Kakadu National Park. I hope you can clear this matter up for me. Well, inquiries have been made and the producer, David Gregg, assures us that the plant in question was not a plant, it was but a twig with leaves on which was used as a fly swat. So, ecological integrity is maintained. Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>